form anymore. Uh, there is an agenda posted in the, in the back hallway if, if you uh, want to see where your item is. And we have three items on old business, uh, Pipkin private access way permit, new business, Daw Road extension, private road review, and uh, the third item is Croto private access way permit. Before we get started, I'd like to uh, present the minutes of the previous meeting from January 20th, 2009, and ask the board if they've had a chance to review it. Good evening, Tom. Hello. Sorry. For the delay. Sorry. Barbara? I have two weenie corrections. <laughs> Um, first page, line, well, in the top it's six, I think. six. Mrs. Schenkel called for nominations for a board chair, and it says Mr. Richardson it should be Mrs. <laughs> Richardson. <laughs> did you pick that up? I did pick that up, yes. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> and then on page three, line eight. The sewer service area has been approved. It should be had been approved. Really very significant, but. Any other motion, um, corrections, amendments, changes, typos? Motion to accept. Motion made by Tom Dolan, seconded by Beth Richardson. All in favor? Aye. Next item on the agenda, <clears throat> Pipkin private access way permit. Uh, Alan Pipkin is requesting a private access way permit to create a second lot at 22 Eastman Road, um, town map U27, lot 4, section 17-7-9, private access way permit public hearing. If the applicant could step up to the podium, introduce himself, and make his presentation. <clears throat> as you're ready okay great good evening um, my name is Jim Netto from Netto Land Surveying in Portland uh, and this is Steve Blaze a professional engineer from Lane Consulting Engineers of South Portland um, we were in a couple months ago we, we believe we've made some good progress on this site here we've had some comments uh, that we have addressed but I believe we should first probably refresh everybody about what we're trying to accomplish here first of all. Uh, my first question is we do have sets of our revised plan um, similar to this here that were only prepared and corrected based on the comments that we got and I didn't know if you folks wanted to. So we don't have those? No. What kind of corrections? Are there, there are minor corrections but we just wanted to make sure that you had them if you wanted to see them. Are these corrections that are responding to a letter from Steve Harding of Oast Associates? In, in yours? Yes. <coughs> and what I would suggest is, I mean, the board, after the public hearing this evening, would be uh, ready to take a motion for approval. And I believe the draft motion includes a condition that uh, the plans would have to be revised per the town okay. engineer's comments. So um, I would um, act as if those plans have not been submitted right. and then after there's a vote if you want to turn them into me I can get them checked to see if you've met the conditions fine. okay as if they were submitted afterwards that's fine okay just one sure. you could just make a brief presentation to uh, refresh our sure uh, the site is at 22 Eastman Road it is a current one unit single-family home there's enough acreage on the parcel to create a second lot. The one thing that this second lot or proposed lot is deficient of is frontage as well as legal access and that is why we're creating a different way to create frontage and access to this rear parcel, uh, parcel A. Uh, there is a legal non-conforming unit on parcel B right now. Both parcels comply with the minimum space and bulk area requirements. 
Uh, we have had some comments as far as general grading, drainage of the site, uh, site distances, etc. Uh, I think that's probably it. It's a pretty, pretty basic site. Okay. You're all set? Yes. Okay. Having heard from the applicant, I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Anyone wishing to address the uh, proposal of <clears throat> proposed private access way and land division for Pipkin Way, if you could step up to the podium, identify yourself, and we'll hear your comments. Going once. <laughs> Going twice. Nobody wishing to be heard. Close up a portion of the hearing. And uh, open up the floor to comments from the board or questions from the board or from the company. Barbara. Um, the only question I have, has the attorney had a chance to look at the maintenance agreement? Yes, and I believe I, I forwarded comments. Um, he had a, a couple of just minor changes. Or he was okay. That was tonight. Was that tonight? This would have been uh, forwarded to you at least a week ago. Yes, I didn't see them. So he was comfortable then with the uh, with the maintenance agreement, Maureen. Yes, that is my understanding. Okay. Did anybody else read that? Since I missed it. Yeah. We got it I didn't. Nine I, or ten days ago, I think. Where did I get it? I okay, that's fine. I don't have it. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. Anyone else? Are you ready for a motion? I am ready for a motion. Findings of motion. Findings of fact. Alan. Alan Pipkin is requesting a private access way to create a new lot located at 22 Eastman Road, which requires review under Section 1979, private access ways. Two, the town engineer has reviewed the plans, recommended that additional information be provided to assure construction consistent with the approved plans. Three, the turnaround, which is required by the private access way standards, is not located on the lot created by the private access way permit. Four, the application substantially complies with section 1979, private access ways, and section 1983, resource protection regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Alan Pippen for a private access way to create a new lot located at 22 Eastman Road be approved, subject to the following conditions. One, that the plans be revised to comply with the recommendations of the town engineer in his letter dated 2909, paragraphs 3 and 5. Two, that the applicant submit appropriate easement restriction language to preserve the proposed turnaround and the right for lot A to use the turnaround in a form acceptable to the town attorney. That's separate from the maintenance agreement, correct? Point three, that the above conditions be met prior to signing the plan and recording in the Cumberland County of Registry of Deeds. Seconds. I'll second. Motion having been made by Elaine Fallander and seconded by Beth Richardson. Any debate on the motion? Hearing none, call the roll. All in favor of the motion? All opposed? Motion carries 6 0. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is Daw Road Extension Private Road Review.
Go ahead. Uh, good evening. My name is Nick Tamaro, and I currently live in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, I would like to thank the planning board members for their time this evening. You all have the application in front of you, so I don't want to go through it word for word, but I would like to touch on some key highlight points. Tonight, I am seeking a private road approval for a 14-foot wide gravel driveway over a street shown on an approved subdivision plan. The site is located at the corner of Valley and Daw Road. The farmland that the site is located on is part of the Maxwell land, which is located behind the farm market between Sproink, Eastman, and Sawyer Road. Um, this driveway and associated turnaround will serve a single family home on a two and a half acre site that I am purchasing from Nate and Kathy Maxwell. We are seeking private road approval instead of private access way because we are preserving Nate and Kathy's options for the future. <coughs> Nate and Kathy own 78 acres with very little public road frontage, so it's very important for Nate and Kathy to keep their right to access their land off Daw Road Extension. I am asking for a waiver on a private road construction standards because we have no future plans for further development and I would like this driveway to fit in with the rest of the neighborhoods and the, the landscape. There will be very little traffic associated with the lot because it is only servicing a single family home. I have worked with Bob Malley, our public works director, to address drainage and existing site conditions so that after the driveway improvements are completed, the water situation will be improved for the neighbors and the site as it is now. I have done all of this at my expense so that I don't create any new water issues. I hope with the complete application presented to you tonight that there are no major questions and concerns that we might be able to get immediate approval. If not, we would be more than willing to answer those questions tonight, and if I can't answer them to the board's satisfaction, then I'd be willing to return for the March meeting. I would like to thank the planning board members and their time and consideration tonight. I would also like to thank Maureen O'Mare, Bruce Smith, Bob Malley for their time and assistance in helping me prepare my application. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what we have on tonight is, uh, is, com is completeness. Yep. Um, Maureen, do we have any issues? I think the main concern here is that the applicant has um, prepared what we call a homegrown plan. <laughs> and, um, the town attorney has reviewed it and requested uh, significant additional detailed information. And attorney or engineer? The uh, engineer, engineer. Sorry. It's okay. Yeah. And uh, the board is going to need to make a decision about how much, if any, additional information is likely to the applicant to provide. Elaine. In principle, I don't have any problem with what it's clear that you're trying to do, and I can understand why when you're creating just a single residence here, you want this kind of an access way. I think, however, and I don't know if it's a matter of completeness or our next step, that we, we do need to go through the process point by point and do waivers for the, the various elements of the subdivision road requirements that you're seeking a waiver for. I, I don't know that we can sort of generically waive them. I, and so I think that's, and I think that's in general what the town engineer is looking for, to take a look at each requirement for us to consider that specific requirement and find that it's acceptable to waive it. I sort of went through that myself at home and concluded that yes it is, but I think we need to do that on a formal basis. So I don't know if that's a completeness question or a question for after. Okay, I heard that. What? Uh, I kind of heard that question. <laughs> um, I, I think what the board has done in the past is you're presented with a list of information that needs to be provided. and. If you make a finding that the application is complete, the implication is that anything that hasn't been provided is waived. Now, you want to waiving a standard is different from waiving an item of completeness, um, and you can also waive standards under the subdivision ordinance, not under the site plan ordinance. But if you wanted to make an individual finding on each waiver of item for completeness, uh, you certainly can. No, I, I was actually referring not to the specific standards that 
become applicable through the subdivision ordinance, which I think are also being requested to be waived. But that may be another step of the process. For example, just the road width, the, the road construction, all of, of those kinds of specific things, which I think sidewalks, which were being asked to waive, I think we need to identify specifically and conclude that we can do that. And I don't see a specific request to do that on an item by item basis. Do we need specific requests in order to make in, in order a to make decision a of completeness? completeness? Either, either we're going to deem it complete and follow the road Maureen just outlined, then we either have to go through the waivers one at a time, or we're going to require some information. Now, I have another question. <laughs> Has the attorney looked at the purchase and sale agreement and the service maintenance agreement? Um, I thought <clears throat> the service maintenance agreement was particularly complex since it allows for future use of the private roadway and some sharing and expenses. Um, the, but it was written fairly simply. The, the attorney has reviewed the road maintenance agreement and I don't either he has it and I'm waiting for comments or he's already provided me with comments, but um, we typically don't worry about who pays. We usually don't care as long as somebody's paying and if, and if they don't do what they've promised to do, that the town can go in and maintain the road and we can bill whomever. So um, as for the purchase and sale agreement, that's typically not something we send to the town engineer. Uh, purchase and, excuse me, the town attorney. Uh, I am tonight. Um, typically, we use the purchase and sale agreement in order to meet the requirement to show right title and interest. So the town's records show that this property is owned by Nate Maxwell, and this applicant has to show that he has the legal right to bring this property before the board. And one of the ways to do that is if you own it and you can provide a deed, which he does not, if you are pursuing this application as a co-applicant with the owner, and while Mr. Maxwell is here, he isn't on the application <coughs> form. And then the third way that we usually see is when there's a purchase and sale agreement that has both the owner's name on it and the applicant's name on it. So that's usually the only thing we use that purchase and sale agreement for. Um, I actually think that it might be prudent to go through the points and grant waivers if we're going to grant the waivers, simply because the applicant can then go back if we decide not to grant a waiver and rework things according to what our wishes might be. In other words, go through it, go through each thing that uh, Austin Associates has stipulated and say, you know, we agree, we concur, we'll grant a waiver. Uh, we won't grant a waiver for this reason. And, and then it's clean. I mean, it, and we can deem it complete by the waivers that we've granted. The only thing I would caution you is um, if you're going to want um, to not grant a standard waiver on, say, the width of the road, don't grant a waiver on providing information on that now. Clear. In other words, just say we won't grant you a waiver on the, the road. Don't, don't waive asking for information that you'll need later on. Oh, we won't grant a waiver that. Well, then to that point then, and maybe I'm having a hard time with the, where completeness, the conversation about completeness ends and the conversation about waivers and the substantive content begins, but in, in reviewing the checklist, there is there seems to be nothing missing here. Am I correct? I mean, there the only thing that is, is no. missing is, um, I pulled it out on my memo, it's item 12 on right. the completeness the drainage. checklist. Yeah. And it's, it's, well, it's more than drainage. It's basically the, the umbrella item that is all the design details, mm -hmm. and which is you know kind of the, the meat and potatoes for an engineer and um, the high cost item for now. And, uh, okay. But also the road width. I think we have to decide whether we're going to grant a uh, waiver. The applicant has provided you information on the width of the road. Mm -hmm. They have given you 
a cross right. section that shows you how they're going right. to construct the road. So for the purposes of completeness, it's they've done. provided you information on roadways. Okay. Um, now, with regard to number 12, though, mm -hmm. um, Barbara, just help me. P means pending. I was a little stymied by the P. Uh, partial. I'm partial. Sorry. Oh, okay. It's not pending. <laughs> I'm wrong. So she's she's led me down the wrong <laughs> path, apparently, for P. Um, have there been further conversations between Mr. Tamro and you or your office about what else is, is needed, or do we have a glaring hole there? What you have is Mr. Tamro has gone over the application with the application um, checklist with me mm -hmm. prior to submitting an application. Right. He has made a decision about the amount of information he wants to provide, and he's asking you for a waiver of anything that he hasn't provided. And then what Wait, you have a waiver of submission requirements. Submission requirements. Submission requirements. Just we're talking about two different waivers, right. and I want to. We are, and that's all you're We are not waiving about. the. That's the right. difficulty I'm having. The just, submission requirements. Just waivers think about. That we deal with now. Do you have a threshold amount of information that you need to consider the request? Thank you. And that's what your first item of business is for tonight. And what you have from the town town engineer. <laughs> is uh, starting at the bottom on paragraph four, he's talking about a list of things that mm -hmm. he would normally ask to be provided for a subdivision road. And I think what Mrs. Schenkel has suggested is that you could actually start with item four and go down through this list and decide whether there are any things here that you actually would like to have submitted. And if you do want to have them submitted, your choice this evening is to look at the applicant and say, you didn't provide it, your application is incomplete tonight, or the applicant promises that he will provide that information next month and you decide whether or not there's, there's a good faith effort on his part to come through. And the risk being always on the applicant, that if he doesn't, he mm. runs the risk of denial. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. That's fine with me. Can, can, can you put it in historical context for me? Previously, have we, have we waived that submission requirement? Have you waived submission requirements? Yes. But, 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 but the big one, the big, the plan, the, it appears to me there's really just one big item that's missing. It's number 12, the surface drainage stormwater management plan, the, the, the overall plan. Yeah, right. And I think what the applicant has provided is he's shown you culvert, He's shown you, I think, a size of a culvert and a, a location yeah. of the culvert. From the construction detail. So he has provided some information, hence the P. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're an engineer, there's not enough information available right now to, for the engineer to be able to say to you, this culvert is sized large enough. Right. And so historically, what, what, what has this board done? Do we know? You've gone both ways. Yeah. I mean, if it's a critical piece in a critical spot, we need the detail. It's generally uh, enough information given the scale of the project and, you know, balancing, you know, the applicant's desire to, to move a one lot project forward. Right. Um, right. And this is where, in, historically, quite candidly, we, we've leaned on the engineers on the board to help us out. And our one engineer, unfortunately, is not here tonight. Right. Uh, so that's, um, it's hard for me to make that decision right now. For example, on this one, do we have any information on site distances? That's, no. That's a kind of information I would think we would need and is not, needs an engineer to determine, I would think. And there are other things such as, do you or do you not propose to have curbing? That you can just answer for us tonight, and that's kind of a much easier. No curbing. <laughs> Which is what the engineer assumed, right? right. Maybe, maybe Barbara's approach is the best one. Yeah. So start going through them one at a time, and if we really hit a, a, a one that we've all got some big concerns on, we talk to the applicant, because these may go quickly. That, yeah. uh, not like a, I mean, I can do my best to answer. No, I understand. Yeah. We're not trying to unreasonably drive no. a price. We're trying to no, get and the that's information the we need to make an informed decision for the town. Um, so the first one is number four. Uh, May I ask a, a sure. later question first? Would you please go over the turnaround? Because you've got a spot marked here that looks like it's a turnaround, <coughs> and there's some verbiage that says that it's not the turnaround. Is it turnaround just at the end of the little short part of if it, uh, I don't know uh, if Daw it, Road? 
If you come down Daw Road, yep. and once you cross onto the access, the turnaround is actually on uh, what is going to be Nate Maxwell's property, and then the actual where you, the truck would back in. Is that the turnaround? Well, it is. Property. It's marked as a turnaround, but then it isn't clear that that's what that. That is, is the turnaround, and this is the, the. Because you have some verbiage in here that I sort see. of indicated the end of Daw Road was the turnaround. Right. That's and you need to change that. I mean, okay. that's very unclear, okay. and that's an important point. Where does it say that, Barbara? Where, where is well, that? I, Could you it was some place in, in the letter that you wrote. That really confused me. Um, 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 um. Perhaps you didn't mean the exact end, but near the end. Exact, yes. That's exact. Well, Basically, you have to describe it as you're going to have an actual turnaround. I guess we should have described that at the end of the, near the end of the Daw Road extension, that's where the turnaround would start and be completed. Well, see, oh, I guess it's on the plans. You have emergency vehicle turnaround. Right. It's down at the bottom of the detail. But it's actually, it's actually, a, but it's off the road. You actually have a, sort of a half a T shape here. Yeah. It is a half a T shape. It's a hammer. It's a, yeah, it's a hammer. But if right. you read the it's plan, the, it doesn't sound like that's the turnaround. If you, because of where the arrow is. Yes. I, it's very confusing. Yeah, that's, that should be easily fixable. Oh, no, I know. But I'm just saying that's. That needs to be very clear okay. on the plan. I'm not trying to nitpick on No, no, it's fine. That turnaround is the turnaround that the chief that gave us, Peter Gleason. Well, that, yeah, and that's fine. That's exactly what we want to see. But just make it clearer on the plan. Right. Okay. All set? Go through this. Sure. You want more of your starting at four would be? Yes. Starting, at, are you four on the on the oast oast side. ladder? Correct. Yeah. Uh, what about three? And I had the same question. <laughs> yes, I have three, two. Um, do you have this letter, Nick? Yes, I do. The oast letter? Yes. Yeah, I'm follow, I'll am i follow with you. Very nice. I didn't think you needed to discuss three because there are some existing 40-foot wide road rights of way in town that you have approved in the past, <coughs> oh, such as Grove Road extension. 40 foot is what we're 40 foot wide. I have no trouble with that. It said that the cross to. section shows 30. Yeah. It's a minor inconsistency, no. apparently. Yeah, he's using, the, he's using the construction detail for the private access way, which has a 30 foot wide right of way. We'll be needing to amend that. To yes. Show a 40 foot wide right of way. But also, uh, when, when, don't we need a waiver? Actually, the, the, the subdivision ordinance does allow short extensions of 40 foot Existing. wide. Fine. So we don't need a waiver for that. I don't. I mean, I'm happy with 40 foot, it's fine. In this case. It's just, <laughs> want to be sure we have it right. So Elaine and I are all set on the break. <laughs> <laughs> Four. Okay, that seemed to be of some concern. Well, I, I think, Nick, you need to work with the, the town engineer in detail. What needs to be detailed there? My concern about for not looking at the detail is the, or not fully un, fully appreciating the detail is that the town engineer couldn't give us an opinion right, about whether the plan that was submitted met the ordinance because of information that was lacking. I think it needs to work with the town engineer. Well, that's that's why, why I had a question of whether whether we should simply be saying it's not complete rather than going through all of these because this seems to me to be a glaring problem, <coughs> particularly given the development within that small neighborhood. Um, I mean, four and eleven. I mean, it's, it's a combination of those two. Insight as to what the engineer might be looking for to help us with three without yeah. requiring a full-blown uh, drainage. I'm, I'm, guess, I'm guessing one of his, can, and I'm guessing here, but when you have a 40-foot width, and within that 40-foot area, you have to create a fairly level 14-foot wide surface road, and then you need drainage on either side of it, and that involves changing grades. And my guess is what he wants is a plan that shows that you are reaching original, that you're getting back to original grade before you slip outside the 40-foot wide ride. 
in the, in, my best guess of, of what in the detail that he's that you've provided the applicants provided on these construction plans doesn't show that. He's the engineer, yeah. he's not getting additional, he's not getting sufficient information. This is frustrating. And I think number 11 kind of attaches to some of the, or, or extends the conversation in number four when it talks about um, sizing of proposed culverts, elevations. I don't have full appreciation of that detail, but I do have an appreciation of the fact that the engineer doesn't seem to have the information that he needs in oh. order to provide us with um, an analysis. And an, and an when, when I was going through the process, I asked uh, Bob to come out and meet with me. Obviously, Malley. Bob Malley, I'm sorry, That's Public okay. Works Director. Um, obviously, I'm trying to avoid some costs. Um, we we're, we're, understand we're trying that. to do we this on a very low budget and that's why in the so I asked Bob to come out and meet with me because I'm very concerned about the neighbors and the water situation and he walked me through a few things he's the one who sent me you know gave me a couple ideas to go see an engineer and get some cross sections I do agree that you know we don't have the culvert sizes because we didn't do a study um, I don't know what the feeling is but at the same time I, I can just put forth my best effort to work with Bob to make sure that this is correct. I talked about installing two catch basins, tying in the Valley Road catch basin that the town already has in, running it out behind, away from all the houses on Valley Road, so that we wouldn't cause any basement floodings and that sort of thing. Um, and he agreed with all of it, thought it was great, he would maintain the system, that sort of thing, but we obviously we didn't spend the money to, to pay somebody to do a, a storm, you know, a drainage plan. And to show that on this plan. We're, where we're at right now is we're pretty much maxed out, and then the next step is to spend the $10,000 or something, which is going to nix the whole project for us. Um, and, and that would be the end of what we're trying to do if we go with the private road. And again, a reason for the private road is to preserve Nate's availability to his land and not cut it off, which is what is a huge concern of the towns is not creating landlocked parcels. And that's what we're trying to do. Trying not to do is create landlocked parcels. And that's really at the heart of my um, concerns about this project. And it's not an issue of completeness, but I want to better understand why it is that a private access way would in perpetuity lock up the access or the secondary access to this land. Um, why is that a per why is that a permanently limiting solution? A permanently limiting solution. The private access way versus the private road, and I, I that is a substantive issue. I know it's right. not an issue of completeness, but it's really I think at the core of what we're ultimately going to decide. I I think the the issue there is that if if there is a private road. The statute allows a private road to serve one or more lots, as opposed to the statutory provision for, it's not called the private access way. Yes, the private access way is Private one access permit. way, yeah, for one house. specifically by, right. by the code, yeah. can only serve one lot. And it cannot be changed? In the future? Well, they'd have to come back again and start all over again. Uh, what, what you're trying to do, I think, is right. I think that... We should, we should start with a private road and we should make it work as a private road. So that in the future, if, if you notice there's a large parcel on yep. this side, that if the Maxwells decided they wanted to do something with this parcel, then they would have the capability already with what's there. But, isn't, but isn't, what's going to be built is identical. From, from, from Eliza's concern is, is that that's something you would spend on engineering if you were putting in more than one more house. More than one house, right. So, I mean, in a way, we're trying to give that enhanced level of approval without the benefit of spreading it out over 10 houses. And I'm not encouraging 10 houses, I'm just no. saying. Um, <laughs> I, I, what I'm saying is the applicant is trying to, to go to that standard on a one house budget, which doesn't make any financial sense. Now, and Maureen can correct me if I'm wrong, but by asking a waiver, for another house to go up or anything to be done on that property other than just accessing it, they or we would have to return to the planning board 
to one, upgrade the road from what we've built it as to a private road, and two, as the engineer puts in one of his comments, is that we need to consider like the size of the water line. We're only bringing a water line in big enough for one house. And then when you, if you put more in, that you're going to have to rip it up? You have to rip it up and come back to you guys and get approval all over again That's before anything else can happen. And I think, she can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, th I think I'm on the right track. No, that's fine. I'm no. just trying to confirm that that's true. Yeah, no, yeah. But I... I mean, the other advantage of coming in for a private road is it very, very clearly establishes that the private road is owned by the body that owns the bulk of the land, which is the Maxwell family. When you come in for a private access way, typically the access way to the lot is owned by the lot owner. And you know, even accidentally, it would be very unfortunate for you to lose one of the few access points to 78 acres that you have right now. Um, so the private road is, is a much better way to preserve the, the Maxwell's right to have access through here. And you know, we do have places in town where people have created one lot and inadvertently and quite catastrophically eliminated their access when they created that lot. So we do try to think into the future about this, even though there's no proposal by anyone to do anything else with that land. So the question is, how deep do we dig into the submission waivers and the substantive waivers to get over that threshold with some comfort level that we're representing the town's interest well enough with this one lot? It just, it just should be noted, too, that uh, the comments from the town engineer about surface drainage and, and those could easily be the same comments you would get for private access way permit. Sure. Yep. That was actually my next questions. And typically we wouldn't require that level of detail. Well, you do require that they have to show that they're not creating sheet flow right. across the intersection and, and they're also not supposed to be creating a drainage problem to abutting properties, even if it's just a private access way. Is there any way to tie this into some level of uh, working with the town uh, EPW to basically make sure it works? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and uh, by our regs, I'm not so sure. Well, it's, it's really, you know, I, I have to put on my municipal Fair. burden hat at this point, and it's not the responsibility of the Department of Public Works to design Thank development you. plans for individual property owners. Well, it sounds like, and, and I'm just, it sounds like the applicant has fairly said, does what he's proposing works, and he's gotten positive feedback from uh, Bob um, that it does, rather than, no, this isn't going to work, you've got to come in with a heightened level of, of plans uh, to show the town engineer that it's going to work as well as me. Uh, have you heard anything to the contrary, Marie? I mean, you have. Uh, I'm trying to work with you. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> I understand. I, I appreciate I it. question is that may influence or direct Marie's answer. Is there precedent or is it reasonable to have notes on the plan to the effect that Bob and Nick have had conversations and what they've agreed upon, instead of showing the detail on the plan that the town engineer is asking for? The, the town engineer and the public works together, the public works director, work very closely together. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, if you wanted to go a little bit out on the limb, I guess one of your options would be to um, go with this for tonight, even if we instruct the applicant to acquire a memo from the public works director that says he's okay with this. Okay, that's and kind of the road And if he's unable going, yeah. to acquire <coughs> that memo, we'll then, then you're looking at trying to satisfy the town engineer's concerns. That's the direction I was wondering about. Trying to achieve satisfaction from our standpoint of our responsibilities, while at the same time not costing the applicant more money disproportionately, disproportionately to the to the development. In my application, uh, I don't you know I know it's a lot of stuff, but on page 11 we included a construction detail. 
is just basically describing, I think, what you guys are looking for. And it's a lot of the information that I took from Bob and the engineer that helped me with my cross sections and that sort of thing about where the water's running from, where it's crossing currently, where it's going to go. Um, I, I just thought I'd mention it to see if that would help answer some of the questions that you guys could, could you put that on the plan short of spending the ten thousand dollars for a I mean, yeah, it's just drainage a, just a page. Uh, yeah which, which one is which one is, um, it's part of the record though mm -hmm. I guess I don't is there a benefit to putting it on the plan no oh it's that one okay no I was just trying to figure it out it says construction details at the construction top. detail at the top it was the second to last page I mean, this is all part of the submission so I'm not sure adding a lot of verbiage on a plan yeah. it doesn't necessarily get us to where we want to be do we have a concern here with precedent, though, in terms of distinguishing why we're making this exception to providing us this information just for this project? I mean, and another project comes, and the applicant similarly tells us that it's the town requirements that are going to either make or break their project, and it's, it's just one lot, or maybe in that case it's two lots, and they just can't afford to do it, and so we waive our town ordinances. And as yeah, you, sympathetic as I am, but you wouldn't see that, that unless it's got the same unique characteristics that this one has. Then I think the we access. need to be very, very careful to identify what are the unique characteristics here, so that we don't get stuck. I can just anticipate that we will hear not less of these kinds of concerns, but more of them in the months immediately ahead um, I think so we would I mean, need I mean, to do that outlining we can describe some of the unique characteristics I think one of them is is that there's 78 acres right. involved that don't have much public road frontage right now except for Daw Road extension another unique and told Maureen I wasn't going to get into it but is that we're trying to start a small farm and preserve the actual Maxwell farmland which doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about but sure. that's another item to this is that I'm a very young Cape graduate trying to do this and I'm working with a farmer that's no longer farming as much as he used to. I mean, that's a unique characteristic in my opinion. I don't know if those are the types of things. I can give you a lot of those well, if that's what you're looking for. Well, candidly to the board, I mean, my, my, the hook for me is the access to that extra acreage. Absolutely. I think that alone is enough to work with in the direction that we're going in in this particular case, which is one of the, you know, complies with the goals of comprehensive plan. I mean, there's lots of other particular items we can pull out here. I mean, right now, at the stage we're at, we're talking about completeness. So, and it's fair that if we're not interested in look, waiving the substantive uh, issues here, that why make you submit mm -hmm. the information? So it's kind of a... Mm -hmm. We're hashing out both issues at the same time, but given those unique characteristics that we've identified so far, that's enough for me, candidly. Just, and um, other folks on the board might not feel that way, but and I'm anxious to hear more. Um, but uh, you know, at this point, given what the applicants told me as part of the record, given the construction details, I'm not interested in asking the applicant to come up with more information than he's already submitted in these two construction detail drawings, the letter. Um, uh, under num item number four. I don't know whether anyone else feels the same way. I think the unique circumstance is that for practical purposes in the um, immediate and perhaps medium term is that um, this will be a private access way. And so perhaps what we should look at is um, what would we need for a private access way permit to be complete. And maybe that's the standard that we should use or a private access way, excuse me, application to be complete. But it isn't, it's a private road, which you have wrong on here too, on the Thank plan. You. I don't know that we would require much more if it were what Liza was talking about. I mean. Require more or require less? Or the, as much. Start, as yeah. much, I guess, as okay. much as the. When we started this, we started with private access way. That's where we were headed that was the easiest. And then we realized what we were doing. And obviously, Nate and I are working together. And once we realized what could happen, that's when we moved to private road. And then we figured out that the private road cost would be too much. And that's when someone suggested that, why don't we ask for a waiver? 
and that would bring the cost back down. It would be labeled as private road, but yet the waiver would protect the cost for me and also protect the town that nothing else could be done down there as far as development unless somebody came back and stood here and asked for approval again. Right. That's what that I'm, was my thought. That's, that's what our thought is behind That's this. what I'm looking to solidify is that yeah. last sentence you just said, that if this thing gets any bigger, we're going to need that detail of information. Yes. Yeah. We have Absolutely. To come, we have to come back. Well, I, I, I think start, I, this entire project should be worked through with the private road, not the access way, because I think it's the right thing to do for the town, and I think Nick realizes it's the right thing to do for the relationships that he's working with um, to make this successful with the Maxwells. I'd like to suggest that perhaps, I'd like to suggest that we consider deeming this complete with the uh, requirement that Maureen has already mentioned. Let me just map this out for you. Deem it complete, table it for a public hearing and, or, and perhaps a, a site walk. Um, with the understanding that Nick will meet with the public works director and the town engineer and address all of the issues that are in the letter with either an agreement of those two parties or notes on the plans or somehow to address them because some of the items that are mentioned by the town engineer are quite significant and need to be identified or mentioned on the plan somehow like the water utilities, for instance, are lacking. Um, but it seems to me to make better sense to move ahead to that next step so that we can deal with the substantive waivers and have him be able to move ahead and address the town engineer issues instead of our sitting here trying to find the answers from various paragraphs out of 25 pages of submission, which I don't feel um, I can do because I don't understand the stuff enough. That's something the town engineer would need to do. How does how do others feel about that? I guess I'm if I'm understanding the town engineer's letter correctly, he's saying that, and I assume he's looked at everything we have in front of us. Mm -hmm. That based on all the information presently in front of him, he as an engineer cannot determine whether this project will have adequate drainage. If the engineer can't determine that, I clearly can't determine that. So if what completeness means is we can't then come back to the applicant and ask for more detail that would allow an engineer to make that determination, then I don't see how we can say it's complete. Um, that's my concern. I'd love to do what, what I would love to move the process on and have some way that Nick can meet with the town engineer and the public works director and provide them information either with sketch <coughs> drawings or with a discussion that's followed by a memo or on some informal way that doesn't require him to hire a professional engineer. But it may be that, that in order to make these determinations, more information is going to have to be produced. And that seems to be what the town engineer, engineer is telling us. What I'm trying to figure out, though, or what it sounds like is that he's had conversations with the public works director that may not, and I don't know if they've been passed on to the town engineer. So he's had, it sounds like from what he's telling us that he's had some feedback from the, from the public works director that has feedback has addressed some of these issues, but what I guess what I don't know is, Maureen, do you know, has, has I, there been a I connection don't, between the I don't know if the town office? engineer and the public works director have been able to connect on this. Okay. Uh, the meeting we're supposed to have on that didn't happen this month. Gotcha. And who's the authority on drainage issues, the engineer or the public the works director? The authority is this board. Mm -hmm. We rely on them. The this other thing I think that would only be fair is to say what we're willing to waiver to in here, what we're willing to give waivers for. I mean, there are a lot of things here that um, Nick has not asked for waivers, and yet we should say, this is, we're willing to give a waiver for this, we're willing to give a waiver for this. So he knows that those are things he doesn't have to deal with. 
I mean, and also so it's clear to the town engineer and whomever else that we are willing to give waivers for those things. Such as like an example of curbing? The curbing That's an easy, and all of Somewhat those. an easy one yes, to sidewalks. identify. Are those completeness issues then? Well, if he's not going to provide them, we don't need the detail in the plan. <laughs> yeah, but we have to say that's fine with us too. Well, let's, let's because it's a maybe private we, road, maybe we, not then a private access way. We need to move on to five, six, seven just to see whether we've narrowed it yep. down to just drainage. And I, I think so. That's I think fair. so. So and then five. Nick can concentrate. It's part of the record, and Nick can concentrate his efforts on those items that he actually has to work on, and forget about the rest of it. So item five is is the site distance measurements, and personally, I have no trouble with leaving that off a one one lot. Yep, agreed. Okay. Anyone else build the plan? Um, six is the sidewalks. Well, he, the, old, the engineer saying he supports our waiver. There aren't any there anyway. Yeah. So. Don't need them. Uh -huh. uh, oh, that's fine. Waiver for that. Seven. Yeah. I'd like to go back to five, though. OK. I think that, that it's saying here they have to provide site distances. Yeah. Right, but uh, that's. Maureen, has that ever been waived? I would think if they, Nick was talking about coming out here with, uh, you know, with trucks and things, I would think site distances would be pretty important. We do that for residential driveways. For, on these private access roads, right. the other ones we've been talking about, we, all, we have site distance information. Well, and maybe that's easy to provide, but uh, my understanding was other than the residents of this home, it's a very infrequent trips on this, that's on, this all that's on the yes. driveway, essentially, yeah. private road. The rest of the activities. Not on coming. Not on Daw Road. Right. Maureen, precedent on that? I don't, I don't think you've ever waived it. I do think, I do know, however, that there are times when the public works director has done that measurement for an applicant. Well, yeah. there you go. We can do that. That works. I, I would like to see a site distance. I would too. So any way that you can provide it, at least financial yep. detriment to yourself. <laughs> Excuse me. Now you can go on to six. I'm so you don't want to go back? I thought we, we moved on from six. Oh, six, seven, that's fine. We're on seven. <laughs> um, this is the landscaping. I, I think we can do yeah. that. Mm -hmm. All right. Eight is the curbing, which we've heard about. Wave, so yep. Nine is... A big one. Do we have something from the fire chief? Well, that's, that's the hook. You know, my view is on the turnaround, you got to make them happy. You get, I'm sorry. You have to make him happy. I mean, he has to be able to be comfortable that he can get his fire truck in and out of there to service. He gave me this detail. Okay. For, uh, just I don't get a know letter. If I've got a way to prove that. But I went to him and he gave me the print off and I took it to the guy who did the plant. Okay. We've had other applicants that have had notes from, have had just, letters from Just, just get a letter. From just the get the a fire letter fire. saying that everything's yep. okay. He's happy with the after um, turnaround. But specifically with regard to the, sur the surface, right? One of the, because the comment here is, is the, the, the surface the material. Sur right. The surface and the T-shape. So you want to uh, look at number nine. I don't think the T-shape is going to be an issue, but I do, I do, he may have some. The surface he, yeah, materials. Yeah. Yeah, but you just need a letter. Just, uh, I had a quick question, and uh, I think Maureen answered it, is that the, all of the heads of departments normally meet on this before, and that meeting didn't happen? That's correct. Is that correct? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, okay. We had numerous cancellations. Okay. I think after you call them, they'll be coming next month. <laughs> well, I, had, I, that, actually, that I have asked for letters from both the fire chief and Bob Malley, That's and cool. they both told me that once they have their department head meeting and go over this, that's when they express their comments. They were both hesitant to sign a letter so that I could bring it to you. Uh, right off the bat. It's always a surprise not to have those ahead of time, but that makes, it's making more sense. Making more sense now. Yeah. We yeah. Just this. trying to put it all together. And that's, that's fine. <laughs> I could have saved us a lot of time on this, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, monuments, right? Is that where we're at, number 10? Yeah, 10. Mm -hmm. Monuments. Right, 10. It's a single lot. Yeah, I, anyone, anyone? I have no problem. I have no trouble with that. No problem. Number 10. 11 is drainage, and we've gone over that. To, are we waving yeah. monuments? Well, yes. Yes. We have a strong opposition. We're going to skip over drainage for the moment, so let's move on to 12 is the... Uh, well, that would be part of 11, too. That all has to do with... Oh, that's way over no. ways. Uh, 
Mr. Tamaro, are you willing to change your detail to meet the requirements under item 12 of the town engineer's letter? Yes. Thank you. That was easy. There we go. Okay. Well, 13 we've gone through. I mean, in terms of the width, right? Yeah, we're waving it. I understand. Okay, that, that's going to happen as part of the town of your 14. Yeah. Oh, well, okay, we just yeah. don't have anything. Uh, yeah. and, and just to be clear, though, that to the extent that this roadway were ever to be utilized for any other purpose, that it would be a requirement, it would have to come in and get reviewed. I'm not going to promise that. If you want to create a separate lot, you need 125 feet in this district, yeah. 100 feet in this district. So unless he can find a way to create... I don't know if you even have 100 feet here, yeah. but I mean, you know, one lot every five, two lots every five years, one lot every five years. So yeah, there's, I'm not going to promise till they, they can't do something else with this road. With okay. this road. Yes, but sir. if they want to do a subdivision, definitely they have to do it. Okay, that answered my question. Thank you. But you're, are you saying there isn't enough frontage for one? I'm saying I, I can't tell. It looks like there might be. Enough for one more. For one, one more. more. <coughs> But if you did one more in the five-year period, that's three lots yeah. and it triggers subdivision review. review. So you'd have to be at least five years, or you'd have to convey it to an abutter. I mean, there's so many exemptions. Okay, but we're waving the width of the, the road. So that's clear, right? Yes. Yeah. And that's not something what? you have to waive tonight. Right. That's right. a substantive issue. Right. And we're, we're well, I know, but I think that, that, that um, Nick ought to know what we're willing to waive. Yeah. I think yeah. that's oh, this is good. This will help me. Okay. Focus. Fifteen. Okay, that should be shown. Yeah. Yep. Nick, do you have, any, you have no trouble with that, right? You got to nope. tell us where you're putting your nope. utilities. <laughs> nope. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, that's a plan note. Sixteen. Six, Sixteen. It just says tell have your engineer put on the plan that. Uh, it's got to be reviewed by the CEO after. Yep. That shouldn't be a big issue. That's a paperwork issue. Yep. That's just, yep. It's fine. Okay. That's it. 17 is also a. Same note. An yeah. Another note. Needs to be noted on the plan. Yeah, on the plan. We're not taking the road. <laughs> right. <laughs> under these terms. Under these yep. terms. Okay. Um, okay. Is that helpful? Yes. So to go back down through. Um, so I haven't talked about drainage, though, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's about what it's down to. That's the uh, elephant in the room. And adding the utilities and stuff like that. Well, he, he's, he's agreed to all that. I'm, yep. the, the issue for us is what are we going to do with the drainage issue? And that's... Well, I think some details should be added. Um, and, and if well, you can work with the town engineer to get some of that detail, like he could maybe say a 15-inch pipe or a 12-inch pipe, and you could put that on the plans. Is, is that, is that uh, possible? I've never worked with the host. Oh, yeah. It, it's something where I can talk, we can, or are they just going to look at me and say you need a study? No, you no can way. call them and directly and you, you'll you be paying for the time you spend with them. Yeah. So, yes, you can call them. But you can, okay. Yeah, you know, maybe in an hour or two of, of his time, you can sit down and get some of these things on the plans. And he'll be happy and we'll be happy. Okay. Try to make it as painless as we can. No, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay, well, the question we have is, do we deem it complete given that what he's going to do, again, his risk coming back to us with that information on the plan, uh, or do we continue it for completeness? I mean, my inclination is to deem it complete to move the process forward. I mean, he's shown a lot of good faith in working with the town on a lot of these issues, and, and if it really is, if he basically can't come to terms with OST between now and the next meeting, and, the, and we don't have that information, we, we may have no choice. That you just... Yeah. yeah. What's the real impact of the project, though, if we don't deem it complete tonight, point. and it's, it's, it extends your time out <coughs> 30 days, but it's only February? Um, I have a goal in mind that I'm trying to get underway. Uh, I'd like to catch the building season. Um, I personally have some goals that are in my business of very t busy times of the year. So my goal was to be able to start in April or May and be completed by September. Um, 
the other whole half of this is that there's a barn to be built and fencing to be put up, which is my goal to get done before the ground freezes. Um, but I'm a, next year. This this fall is my goal, and uh, it's a very ambitious goal, and that's what I'm going for. Um, so that's why it is a it is to, to not deem complete pushes me back another 30 days, like you said, makes it tighter in the end. Um, you know, for me, I'd love to see it deemed complete. Let me work on these issues and get them for you by next meeting. And like you said, if I don't have them by next meeting, then you have no choice but to nix it and we start over again. Um, I think that's a risk I'm willing to take, but it's, it's up to you. I, I don't have, I mean. As long as I comply with these things, we don't, nothing can happen until these are answered, correct? Right. right. No. I'd like to make a motion. Uh, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Nick Tamerell for a private road review under the subdivision ordinance to extend Daw Road be deemed complete. Be it further ordered that the app above app oh, well, one at a time. <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> Motion having to be made, do I hear a second? I'll second. I, I, I would request that deem complete, including all the comments that we've made this That's evening. Fair. Is that just so the applicant's clear and the record's clear to that? Is, is that okay to amend it? That's fine. Mm -hmm. Second. And Beth, motion having been made by Tom Dolan and seconded by Beth. Oh, well, I, well, I would just add to the complete. The amendment is that, um, that it incorporates all of the terms and conditions as discussed at this meeting. So Tom made the motion, Beth seconded it. Mm -hmm. Debate on the motion. Any questions, comments? My only comment is then that really the risk of any delay is with the applicant. Fair enough. My shoulders. Yeah. So. That's fine. Thank you. All in favor of the motion? All opposed to the motion. Motion is 5-1. Motion carries. Thank you very much for your time. No, wait. Uh, we have to discuss oh, we have one the sidewalk yeah. and public hearing. We just need like to make another motion? Sidewalk. Oh, sidewalk. We want to sidewalk. That's the I think. Yes. Yeah. I think we should. I think we should. I, I think this is this is a situation where you can show us the neighbors and where you're really put the drainage. Yeah. And, and quite candidly, on one of the issues, just as an example, uh, sight lines. I don't care what the paper says. I like to go out there and stand Absolutely. and take a look. Sure. I'm a visual person as well. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, I think the sidewalk is necessary. Another question is, what am I going to do? <laughs> well, I know, let's hope it's not on a day it snows a foot and a half. It is a wooded lot, so the snowpack is very minimal most of the time. Well, I think the the, the lot itself, I don't think we even need where to look gonna at. Where you're going to be looking at will be minimal. We just need minimal, to look at the it's private road. It's very minimal road. snowpack where you'll be looking. Yeah. I have snowshoes. <laughs> Absolutely. I do too, yeah. so yeah. we're ready to go. Several pairs. Um, well, given two, we may have two sidewalks. It's essential for that. We are gonna, it's just the, the challenge is because the planning board meeting was moved back from right. last week, right. um, the next meeting of the board is March 17th. The submission deadline for that is February 27th. Because you've moved the meeting, we probably will you know, move our submission deadline to next Monday, March 2nd. And typically you try to hold a site walk before an applicant has to sub resubmit their information. So it, you just, it's just yeah, a very it's tight time. <laughs> Do you do a site walk as a whole, or do yeah. you divide them? And it's open to the public. It yeah. It's, it's advertised. I mean, people have every right to be there. Yeah. How, yeah. how many days do you need to advertise it? No, oh, you, you can schedule yeah. it for the Saturday night. How many of us can come on Saturday? I can come on Saturday. I can come on Saturday. Yep, I'll be there. OK. Six? Time. Five thirty. No. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Get it out of the way. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> what, what time did we agree? <laughs> We have it. Oh. <laughs> I'll let people have children decide what time. Eight. Yeah. A.M. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Sounds delightful. It's Saturday. Nine o'clock. I'm going to have jammies. <laughs> eight Come on, you know five. Jim's coming in a bike. Eight o'clock. <laughs> eight o'clock. I'll bring coffee, Barbara. Mm. It's the donuts that I want. Sounds to lovely. So it's eight a.m. Really? Eight. Are we seriously? It's, it's at, it's at Not 8 at 9. <laughs> Can I hear 8.30? 9? <laughs> 9? 
I'm open to any time. Well, that's the question. How many people want we, we, nine? Well, we may have another one. That's the other reason to start. Yeah, nine and ten. <laughs> well, we can always schedule the other one at eight. <laughs> no. yeah. How many people oh, wait a minute. for nine? Come on, Beth. I think nine. Know. How about nine? I think nine's good. Nine's fine. Right. It doesn't yeah. matter. And you don't have to bring coffee, Peter. We'll make it at home. Meeting at Doro. Yes. Yes. All right. Valley and okay. talk, right? All right. Okay. And that way, if there's anything else we suggest, we can suggest it then. Yeah, absolutely. That being resolved, can I make a, another motion? Mr. Chair? Yes. Be it ordered that the above application be tabled to the March 17, 2009 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. Motion having been made by Tom Dolan, seconded by Barbara Schenkel. Discussion on the motion? All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. We hope we've been somewhat helpful. No, thank you <laughs> for working with us. Mr. Chair, um, be it duly noted that I am recusing myself from any okay. form of conversation on the next matter. Did you know that? Tom Dolan stepping down. Um, I do. Can I? I'm feeling that, so. No, I'm, I'm a no. That's fine. I have one. Uh, This is what I know. Yeah, and you probably talked about it at the workshop. So let's let's talk quickly. Look this my son. Okay, we do have one more item. Uh, the next item I'd like to call it is the Crato. Is it pronouncing it correctly? Crato. Credo. Private access way permit. Jeanette Credo is requesting a private access way permit for a vacant lot located at 112 Delano Park. Excuse me. We do have another item if you could step out if you're going to talk. Section 19-7-9 private access way permit. The uh, matter is on for completeness. If the applicant could step up to the podium, introduce himself, and make his presentation, that would be great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is John Mitchell, Mitchell and Associates, and I represent uh, Jeanette Credo. Uh, Bob Danielson is with me this evening. Hold on, John. Sorry. microphone okay <laughs> I had no idea what that was going to be <laughs> go ahead John okay um, this application is for a private access way permit uh, to make lot four uh, lot four which is located right here uh, to make it a buildable lot uh, this is lot four and this is lot five. Uh, lot four is owned by uh, Miss Credo, who resides in the single family home located on lot five. Uh, this, is, this lot is located um, at the end of uh, Delano Park entrance number one. Um, this is the extension of the road here. And, uh, the area in green represents the existing vegetation. Uh, the area in sepia brown represents the driveway that serves Miss Credo's uh, residence. And as you can see, it goes across lot four. Uh, this is, uh, lot four is a non-conforming lot consisting of 29,013 square feet. Um, it is located in the residential A zoning district as well as the shoreland zone. Uh, this line represents spring high tide line, which was 
surveyed. Um, in this uh, small dash line here represents the debris line of which the 75 foot and the 250 foot uh, setbacks are measured from. Uh, there is a 20 foot wide unimproved roadway located along the northerly line of Lot 4 and Lot 5. Um, it is also located along the westerly side of Lot 4. Uh, this is Fort Williams located here. Uh, this is the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, there is a residence located on this lot, uh, Dan Cassetta's uh, residence, and this is the residence of Mrs. Harris. There are some, we took a series of photographs uh, showing the existing conditions. Uh, this is looking down the 20 foot uh, unimproved roadway. This is looking uh, down the existing driveway that serves Ms. Credo's uh, residence. Uh, this is another shot looking down the 20 foot uh, unimproved roadway. And as you can see, there are uh, some existing uh, fir trees that border the, the northerly uh, property line along Fort Williams. This is Ms. Credo's residence. Um, again, looking down uh, the 20-foot unimproved roadway. Uh, this is looking in the opposite direction, looking west. And there are, these are the existing fir trees and there, uh, there's a series of stone walls throughout this property here. Um, this is the low stone wall that borders the existing vegetation. And then there's a series of slides that just show the character of Delano Park. Uh, the roadways within Delano Park um, vary from 9 to 12 feet wide. Uh, this is uh, sheet two, which is a, the plan of the private access way. Uh, because lot four uh, does not have the required minimum road frontage of 125 feet, uh, the applicant is requesting a private access way that would provide the minimum road frontage. The private access way, um, as you can see, is located uh, within the 20-foot wide uh, unimproved roadway. Uh, the required hammerhead turnaround, a portion of that is located on lot five. And uh, in addition to this, because the, uh, the private access way standards require a 30-foot wide right-of-way, we have and this is only 20 feet, we've provided a 10 foot wide access easement parallel to the uh, unimproved roadway to, to uh, give the 30 foot overall right of way width. Um, if the board remembers during the workshop meeting, we presented, um, initially we presented a nine foot wide uh, paved private access way that was done um, to uh, maintain the character of Delano Park to be consistent with the other roads in Delano Park as well as to preserve the existing uh, vegetation that is along the property line and the stone walls. Um, the fire chief wasn't comfortable with the nine feet, nine foot width. Uh, however, he did agree to a 12 foot wide uh, paved width um, with a two foot wide uh, grass gravel shoulder which runs along the, uh, the northerly side of the private access way. And he did approve that uh, to give the overall 14 foot width. Uh, the turnaround, the hammerhead turnaround um, is, has been designed in accordance with the town standards However, what we're proposing here is, is a little unique, where instead of a, the typical bituminous concrete pave, pavement, we're pro proposing a permeable paver. 
and that's a concrete paver which is allows uh, stormwater to infiltrate down through the paver. Uh, it's a DEP approved project uh, product, um, and Bruce Smith has approved it also. Uh, the permeable pavers uh, will be edged with a stabilized paver um, along the <coughs> along either side. <clears throat> and this was done to minimize the uh, minimize the impervious surface that would be located on, on lot 5 and to maintain the lot coverage. Um, and then the relocated driveway to service Ms. Credo's residence will be, will extend off the end of the hammerhead uh, and then connect to the existing turnaround. Um, we have met with both the fire chief and um, Bruce Smith to review this plan um, and they have both approved um, the design of it. <coughs> uh, this is sheet three which is the grading, drainage and utilities plan. Um, the water will, uh, will be, the water to service lot four will extend up this uh, utility easement and enter lot four at this point here. And it has been, um, it doesn't show on this sheet, it shows on sheet five, the extension of this water service goes along uh, and out to the, the existing roadway of Delano Park where we have connected to the main. Uh, the relocated water main uh, to service Ms. Credo's residence will extend down the right of way, uh, the new private access way, and into her house. Uh, there is an approved on site disposal, septic disposal system, which has been located here for lot four, and the application, uh, the HHE 200 forms are in your booklet. Um, and then the electric telephone and cable will uh, come off of this utility pole here to service lot four, and then to service lot five, again, an underground service will be relocated along the private access way into um, the existing residence. Stormwater management, uh, the access drive and the turnaround, um, the grading and drainage of, of of those two elements uh, have been designed um, uh, to slope with the natural terrain. Uh, Les Berry of H2M has done a detailed analysis, stormwater analysis uh, of this design in a letter from him is in your packet and Steve Harding has concurred with his findings. Uh, and then finally, um, staff comments, we have uh, We've addressed all of the staff comments, which includes Marine's memo dated December 10th, 2008, Steve Harding's letter dated December 9th, 2008, um, and those, our response uh, to their comments are in our December, uh, I'm sorry, January 30th letter. And additionally, we've addressed comments, uh, Steve Harding's latest comments, um, which were dated February 9th. Uh, one thing I did fail to mention. Uh, how do I go backwards, Maureen? One of the comments uh, from you and Marina or, or Steve was to uh, locate the existing driveway uh, that was going to serve, that will service lot four. And we have shown that um, in this location here, which is the same location as the existing driveway is located. So that, that has been um, identified. I've also met with the fire chief to review this location and to review uh, access requirements for his vehicles 
to access uh, lot four. So with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to Bob, who will talk um, about some of the legal issues. I'm, I'm not that technically savvy, so I can't do all that stuff. <laughs> um, what I did in the past three months was to work with the Delano Park Association, who owns that brown sepia line there, um, to make sure that I satisfied Delano Park with respect to the, the maintenance of that road. And we've got an agreement, which I provided uh, Maureen with a copy, and the basis of that agreement provides for five or six provisions between the parties. Basically, it creates right title and interest in Mrs. Credo to improve that section of Delano Park Road to serve the lot and, and to basically allow us to complete the improvements that are necessary with the turnaround and the paved road and the 12 foot wide improvements, etc. cetera. Uh, it also allows Mrs. Credo to do all the improvements that are required by the planning board to accomplish that with respect to additional landscaping and drainage and everything else. Uh, Delano Park has basically given us the, the ability to go through this process and will support any conclusions that you come up with uh, so we won't have to go back to them. The trustees of Delano Park have agreed to um, add to the existing roadways that they maintain. The trustees of Delano Park maintain all the roadways within Delano Park. Those are all private roadways and there's private contractors and they've basically said that they will add the length of improvement that we make to their existing roadways. Um, they've also allowed the creation of the utility easements that John Mitchell mentioned, the water easement that's going to run up along that uh, unimproved way along the edge of Lot 4 and the uh, electric and other utility easements that are going to now have to rerun to Lot 5 and the new ones that are going to run to Lot 4. And uh, there was an encroachment issue on Mrs. Credo's house uh, which we also worked out with Delano Park that they're going to allow that to stay where it is. Uh, as you see, it uh, does kind of cross the lot line, kind of. Uh, in addition to the agreement with Delano Park, I submitted for Maureen and the board's review um, a deed, an easement deed, uh, which Mrs. Credo is willing to enter into with the town that allows the town, uh, that actually grants the 10-foot easement on her property, which if you look, I don't know if you can see it very well. Uh, John, could you point for me? It runs right around the turnaround and then along the edge of the brown area there. The, the first 10 feet of that uh, area will give you the 30-foot right-of-way required by the planning board requirements. Even though the Delano Park roadway is only 20 feet wide, we're going to um, basically agree that that additional 10 feet will be an easement area for the benefit of the town. Um, we've agreed to maintain the pervious surface turnaround. Um, John did a very good job explaining that this, this turnaround is constructed of materials that are totally pervious because the impervious surface ratio of lot 5 is currently non-conforming and we don't want to increase that, we can increase that, that impervious surface ratio. So this turnaround, even though it looks like more impervious surface, is actually less impervious surface because the materials used are, are allowed to drain through and um, we don't increase the impervious surface on lot four. I think we have some room with respect to lot four for more impervious surface, but um, we certainly don't impact it at all with, with our, our plan here. Uh, and Mrs. Credo has agreed to, to maintain that. So what we've got is we now have uh, a situation where we think we've got a plan that's approved by all the various town departments and the town engineer. We've got right title and interest through Delano Park. We've got Mrs. Credo agreeing to provide whatever protections the town needs to service, maintain, and um, uh, basically allow that uh, uh, new section of the road to be maintained in a uh, uh, 
consistent way with the other town approvals. And we're basically looking for completeness and then approval. Thank you. That it? That's it. Thanks. I just have one quick question, Bob. Um, and I just want to make sure I understood you correctly. The approvals that the trustees made are open-ended to the extent that if the, the board adds some requirement that they would be amenable. Yeah, I, think, I, I can read you the language, but we specifically took the planning board into account. And that's fine. That's, I just want to clarify that. Yeah. If, and, if and generally, you have a copy of that. Okay. that. That is our intent. Yeah, and okay. that's what was agreed That's to. fine. Thank you. Okay, so the first issue we have to deal with is whether whether this uh, application is complete, and if it is, we should set it for a public hearing. Barbara? I have a motion for the board to consider. Um, be, it, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of uh, Jeanette, Jeanette Credo for a private access way permit to make an existing vacant lot without frontage on a town road and located almost at the dead at the end of Delano Park entrance number one be deemed complete. Second. A second. Okay, motion having been made by Barbara and seconded by Elaine. Any debate on the motion? Hearing none, call the roll. All in favor of the motion? It's five, nothing. Motion carries. Next item we have to consider is a site walk. I've been down. I've walked, I've already been down there. And I, okay. I personally don't remember. I, I guess I'd weigh in on and agree with Beth. Uh, I don't think I need one. I just, I'm not. As long as the association has agreed yeah. to the entire situation, I don't see any particular need either. No, I agree. Can I comment on that? Before? Sure. Because I think it would be helpful. Um, the, the association was very helpful over the last three months. I mean, we went back and forth many different times, and I found them to be very professional and very supportive of this proposal. Um, there's Director Butters that were, that were supportive, and in general, we didn't hear one negative comment from Delano Park, which has 60 or 70 houses, which we thought was, was pretty good. So they Maureen, have you heard from anybody? Yes. yes. Um, and well, the comments that they've made, Maureen, um, and we haven't had a public hearing, did, do you think they might be helpful to have a site walk? to address some of their concerns. And I, and I know you can't necessarily account for everything. I just didn't know if you heard something specific that would say maybe a site walk would help us. Um, you know, I, I, see, I see planning board member Quinn <laughs> stepping up. Oh, I was just gonna say there was a public comment um, submitted via email from so there was a positive who in the comment. association. Uh, it was regarding the plantings there was a positive the new about, about improved about roadway. I didn't see it as necessarily positive. Well, it was to please yeah. keep things as natural as possible. I think, I, think it was I think it asked for to remove the existing trees and put in arbor fighting. But, um. <laughs> That's not what I said. <laughs> There, you also received a comment from the fire chief this afternoon yes. that yes. suggested that in light of the fact that there's insufficient water in there, he'd like to see it sprinkled. Yeah, but right. you're going out there is not going to help us with that. I don't it? know whether it will or not. Oh, sure. Fair I mean, enough. You, you, you may see the location. You may sure. be persuaded one way or the other. I mean, well, it, even, if, even if you don't have a sidewalk, I mean, board members can, can always drive individually up. drive out there, take a look at it. Why don't we go after the site walk, those of us who want to? I'll go on the site I mean, I'll, I'll go on. We're either going to call, we're either gonna yeah, call for it forward. officially or we're not. We're not. And, then, and then, frankly, I, after, the, after anybody's free time, they can go in, go up there. But. Yeah, well, you know, let's go up there. But, huh? can, I, can I just interject sure. one comment? Uh, we have addressed uh, the planting uh, right along here. The, the trees did have to come down because of the wider roadway. Yeah. I don't think um, that's much loss, though. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Those trees. No, they're in poor condition. But we have uh, added additional plantings, including our providers. Um, and that's always available on the substantive plan to talk about whether that's enough or too much or whatever. So. Yeah. Good, thanks. Uh, thank you for pointing yes. out. Yes, yeah. 
And so I guess um, to, just to, to um, echo what Bob was asking, um, you know, see, this is this is somewhat unique in that it is a private neighborhood. We have re uh, received approval from um, the association, and I think I don't I don't know. There's been a couple letters that have been I, you've met with neighbors. Yeah, um, and in fact, um, I think the only written comment that um, was was anything was one by Karen Harris. Karen Harris. Karen's actually here tonight, but uh, she also signed the Delano Park Agreement as one of the trustees. Yeah, I so. don't see that as anything that I would consider anything but saying, please keep things as natural as possible. It, it, Which it, I thought was a positive comment. The, the Delano Park roads are pretty unique. Yeah. And, and to turn them into wider two-lane roads is no. not something that anyone wants to No, see. I don't think. Well, I don't think any of us are thinking that it should be any wider than what, what is required. What, what, what we've needed yeah. for emergency. Exactly. And, and as far as the water is concerned, um, that's something that really would need to be discussed next time. I don't know what we're going to see there. I, I have talked to the fire chief about that. Okay. Good. Yeah. And, and, and the fire chief has, has recommended a sprinkler system for... In a new house. For what? Four. Um, I... I would comment on that, that I'm not sure that the sprinkler system is required because I understand that they pull the water off of Shore Road, not from there anyway, but it, it's going to be up to the board to decide whether they the, the require a sprinkler system. system. But it's that's just, not at the level of completeness anyway. Right. It, it's exact, that's exactly right, but it's but also an issue that um, is oftentimes discussed as a uh, preferred approach as opposed to a requirement. And obviously a sprinkler system is expensive for anybody, so I don't take that lightly with respect to requiring a sprinkler. I would be perfectly comfortable if, if there isn't going to be a problem with um, somebody saying we didn't do our job right, going down there myself. I have no because I, I think that um, given the things that we have to look at, it's not the same situation as the last situation right. where we're putting a private road in. So well, I would be comfortable just going myself. This isn't going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have. Uh, I mean, if anybody else feels we should have a sidewalk, then fine. I think the public hearing, but, in my opinion, would take care of any. Yeah. But I'm going to go myself just in case somebody stops me and tells me. I think Liza wants to go out, but she doesn't want to be the other one saying It's a great view. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but can I make one suggestion? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Credo is very elderly, and there is a sign at the end of her driveway that says private way. Well, I would just stop out but there and stop either, and look. Either, just do me a favor, either call me or, or John beforehand, just so we can call her and tell her that a car looking like yours is going to drive up okay, there. Okay, well, yes. I'll see you right after this. Then. Okay, okay, great. That'd, that'd be fine. Okay, I, I'll probably go Saturday right after the sidewalk. I'll so, just mention it to her. Uh, fine, that would be great. Okay, so I, we need to set a public hearing then. Do we need another motion? Yes. Okay. Barbara, would you like to make a motion? Sure. Be a further order that the above application be tabled to the March 17, 2009 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. A second. Motion having been made by Barbara Schenkel and seconded by Beth Richardson. Do I hear any debate on the motion? Hearing none, I'll call the roll. All in favor of the motion? Five, five to zero. The motion carries. Thank you very much. I, I, wait a minute. I have one question to ask because I don't know. That, that, what looks like a road in front of the, a parcel number four, what is that? That's it. It's a right, right here, Bob? Yeah. What is that? that? That's very similar to, or it's the same as this. It's a 20-foot wide, unimproved roadway. Oh, okay. So, so. Grass, it's all grass. Okay. Paper okay. street. It's paper. So it's another paper street, and that is not long enough for frontage either. That doesn't go in. Uh, I can answer that. Sure. Yes. The requirement for frontage, I believe, and Maureen can correct me, says on an improved way in the town of Cape Elizabeth. And let me borrow your thing. Oh, and the other one's in an improved way. I get turned on. Do I hold it? All right. 
I think that the improved way stops right there. Okay, that, that's fine. That's why it's not long enough. That's fine. I was just curious because from the plan it looks like yeah. there should be acts, you know. It is laid out, but it's not improved. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Wait. One more item before we. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I have discs of the PowerPoint presentations that were submitted from the Eastman Meadow folks from the last time when they had the technical problem. So I will hand those out before the end of the meeting and one will go into the town file. Okay. Now I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor of the motion to adjourn? <laughs> Thank you very much.